Hi everybody, it's Rob Cosman and I'm going to take you through the new payment um, dashboard that uh, Amazon has come out with now and I think it's a little bit better and I'm going to show you how to book that into QuickBooks. Now before we get into that, if you find you like my videos, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to check out in the description. I've got some courses. I've got a Wicked on gating course. I've got my uh, QuickBooks template which you can buy and upload it and follow all of this methodology makes it super easy save yourself some time but right now I want to I'm gonna to try to show you on two screens here the journal entry I've created in the payment dashboard now Amazon just came out with a new payment screen which you you see here now if this looks small I'm sorry but I want to make sure that they're both on the same screen so you might not want to blow it up or put it on your TV but because some of the numbers are small so those who've looked at my other videos, I've got a kind of two different methods on how I suggest you kind of book your sales, your sales and FBA fees and everything. One is just on a monthly basis using the, um, um, what I call like a monthly summary. And then you kind of put everything, you know, as your payments come in, you put them to a transfers account. And then that kind of balances out as an AR and a, or um, accounts receivable kind of throughout the year, uh, depending on when your cutoff is. But the other method is where you create a journal entry and you book it exactly to the pro the um, the payment summary. Now it was kind of a pain before they really didn't break out the taxes and stuff, but now it looks like on the new payment dashboard that we have, they're actually breaking it out, so it makes it a little bit easier. So I think either method's good. My my one um, once a month because that's really easy to tie in, or this method I think is really good now that they have the taxes broken out. Um, but you can do either. It's whatever you feel comfortable with. But I'm going to take you through kind of how I just did a journal entry using this new payment dashboard and kind of breaking things out. You can use it. You can go more detail, but still, this will just kind of give you an idea. So what I've done is I've just created a new journal entry here. Um, what I would suggest is you pick the date that the money actually comes into your account. Um, it just makes life easier. So this one is from May the 6th to the 20th, but the money actually came in the 21st or 22nd. I have to double check, but I'm going to change it. So this is the payment um, settlement period that you get in the new look now. And I'm using uh, a CA reference. This is uh, Amazon.ca. It's very similar on .com, but this one's on, on .ca just because there's GST and HST, which a lot of my clients have. So I want them to be able to follow this. Now, the first thing here is you've got your product charges, which is basically your sales. Um, the ones that are that are underlined and darker have more detail, so we can click on those and, and get more info. Um, I might have to squeeze this over a little bit to see. But so the first step is the product sales is exactly that. I'm all FBA. Um, I do a little bit of merch fulfill, but I just put it all in here. Let's say. Okay, so I just chose FBA product sales. You can break this down if you want, but this is just the bucket. These accounts all mirror the monthly summary. Um, they're not exactly lined up. I mean, this is pretty generic. If you use the monthly summary method, it's more detailed, but you know, if we're just going to use this payment, this one payment method, we'll just pick some accounts. So what I did was I picked product sales, and then I picked my GST, PST payable. So this is amounts that I've collected because I'm registered here. I've got this um, sales tax collected. And then we've got some shipping. So these are all monies that are coming in. That's why they're in whatever this greenish bluish color is. So this is money in, money in, shipping credits. I just picked this shipping credit income account. And then I just chose FBA transaction fees because these are refunded expenses. You can click in here and see more detail like promo rebates and, and other. You can break those down if you want and put them in little buckets, but I really didn't care. It doesn't bother me. Then the second half we get down here now is refunded sales. So if you click on this, this is when we get a little bit more detail. And this I recommend you do because there's also part of the refunded sales is also the refunded tax. Okay, so they've got the tax in here. So you want to make sure that you're recording the sales. So whichever FBA product sales you do here, make sure you use the opposite because that's coming out. And then you also want to bold bring down the GST and HST payable. So as you can see, the tax here is the 109. And then I also just put some shipping credit refunds in there. Okay, so it takes care of that. Promo rebates, I just picked promo rebates. Oh, wow. And the FEA inventory fees, it doesn't give me any more detail on this. So I really didn't care. I just put it all into transaction fees and figured that was pretty safe. And then the FBA selling fees, 
let's click on this guy. Um, basically, other. I like how they just lump all the other, which is really just a large amount. So I assume that that's all the the selling fees. So I just put that in there, and I and I broke out my subscription. No big deal. And then to make the entry balance should be exactly the amount of proceeds that come into your bank account. Boom, right there. So I'm using this CA transfers account because this is what I've always done on the monthly one. Um, you could go ahead and and put this, you know, instead of CA transfers, the actual bank account that you're using and then just delete it um, when it comes in because you don't want to double count the deposits so you can just do that if you're say for instance if you this is a US sales you're probably not gonna have the uh, the sales tax so you're gonna have to figure whichever impacts you um, but also if you're Canadian and you're recording this as your dot com sales and you want to use the currency if you get a different exchange rate like using OFX you get a better exchange rate than what QuickBooks automatically populates then you can actually change that and use the exact rate that you get from OFX in the foreign exchange and that'll make everything like perfectly match um, that's what I recommend so then you could actually have the final money that arrived in your bank account after it went through OFX and all the exchange rates will match and it'll make your banking reconciliation way easier so again, you don't have to use exactly each one of these but you know these do mirror um, the charges but the important thing you want to make sure is that you're recording your taxes correctly you're bringing them in and out I mean the taxes collected but also the taxes that are refund this payment method still doesn't take into account remember the invoice you get every month for amazon.ca FBA fees and the sales taxes that they charge on their services and the inbound so check my other video just an easy way to book those and so if you're GST or HST registrant you want to book them as well so Hopefully that uh, is helpful, and if it is, please subscribe and check out my other products, my other links. Make sure you join my groups. Everything's in the description below. Thanks.